nine. It was Bradley's idea. It was a dull night, and in the dingy little room at headquarters where the reporters on the police beat gathered, Bradley, of the Express, tired of playing three-handed stud and waiting for something to happen. Ah, I've had it. Well, what do you mean, you've had it? I've had it. H-A-D had I-T it. <sighs> I've had it. The man's had it. Yep. I guess I've had it, too. I reckon I'll go home. Yeah. yeah. Hey, tell you what. Let's play a joke on old Pop. Huh? Let's play a joke on old Pop. Pop Henderson was the night attendant on duty at the morgue in the basement of the building. Funny place to play a joke. Funny person to play a joke on. Pop Henderson, watchman at the morgue. But Bradley was like that, you see. He was a jokester. And that's how it all began. The hour had gone long beyond midnight. Biotex. The new soak and free wash powder presents Beyond Midnight by Michael McCabe. Just soak, just soak in biotex. Just soak, just soak in biotex. Just soak, just soak in biotex. If you have wondered how to get your washing really stain-free, understand this. Biotex removes the stains and dirt washing won't. Just soak, just soak in biotex. Stains, grass stains, tiresome collar and cup stains, ingrained dirt, soil and grime. Out they all come, and you don't stir a finger. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Use it for cottons, silks, woolens, synthetics. Use it to make new again. Soaking in Biotex removes the stains and dirt, but washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in biotex. Uh, so, how about it? How about what? Let's get old Pop a little bit, huh? What do you say? No, I'll leave old Pop alone. He's not very bright. Should have been retired years ago. Slow-witted. So he's slow-witted. Well, you gotta be working in the morgue. <laughs> so who cares? So he's slow-witted. I got a gag. Be a laugh. Morgan? Uh, Let's go and kid old Pop a bit, huh? Uh, I don't care. I've had enough. I gotta wait till the paper's gone to bed. Sure. What kind of joke, Bradley? <laughs> a joke, boy. Wait and see. He's an old guy, He's Bradley. never been retired, anyhow. His age, huh? Well, he's got obligations. Got to work. Wife's an invalid. He needs the dough. Now, what does he do all night long in the morgue, then? Read? Does he read or something? Read? He can't see your hand three feet from his face. No, he don't read. Listen to the radio? How should I know? Well, how about it, huh? Night watchman in a morgue. Well, little Johnny, what do you want when you're all grown up and leave school? Please, teacher, I want to be night watchman at the city morgue. <laughs> Come on, you guys. It's a bad night. Need something. Uh, what do you say? What do you say, Morgan? Morgan the morgue. Ah, <laughs> uh, now, leave Pop alone. He's old. So he's old, for Pete's sake. So everybody don't laugh anymore just because they get old? Come on. Oh, yeah, why not? Come on, let's go on down. See old Pop. Boy, I'd like to drink. Hey, maybe Pop's got booze down in the morgue. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Like in all those compartments, he don't stack chips at all. He keeps bottles and bottles of my whiskey there for the figure. <laughs> Bradley was an inveterate practical joker. He had a reputation for thinking up original gags. To him, it was the joke that counted. 
He didn't care whom it was on. Pop Henderson sat in his tiny office. He was long past retiring age, but he had commitments. He didn't read or listen to the radio. He just sat night after night waiting for his shift to be over. Along one wall of the main room were 20 compartments, about 18 by 24 inches, just big enough to hold a full-grown man, providing, of course, he had no intention of turning over. And no one who occupied one of the compartments ever did. They were refrigerated, with the temperature below freezing. Hey there, Pop. We'd like to see number 11. Just had a tip. He may be that missing New York banker. Number 11? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What are you going to do, Brad? Shut up. Uh, yeah, number 11, Pop. <laughs> there you are, boys. Is it the one you're looking for? Mm hmm. Yeah, looks like him, okay. Now, uh, listen, get the record on this guy for us, Pop, will you? Okay, Mr. Bradley. Okay. Okay, Morgan, come with me. Fur, you go with Pop. Keep him in the office. Furness followed the old man out, and Bradley and Morgan got busy preparing for the joke. Furness kept Pop in the office, pretending to look through the papers of number 11, until Morgan came in. Oh, there's no need to bother, Pop. Yeah, I guess we, we made a mistake. You can put 11 back to bed. Uh, come on, Fur. Let's go back. Lay a few more hands. Okay. The two newspaper men went back upstairs, and Pop methodically put away the papers in their files. Then, with the same slow, unhurrying movements of a man who is waiting out his life on a job, he trudged back into the big morgue room toward the open compartment, the extended slab, and the sheeted figure lying on it. He was a dozen feet from it when the sheet stirred, <coughs> and the sheeted figure slowly sat up. Where am I? What have you done to me? <laughs> what have you done to me? You tried to kill me. <laughs> Wait, six. <laughs> He's alive. He's come back. Start. 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 You scared the pads off him, okay? <laughs> now, come on, get the cards out quick before the sergeant gets down here. His ulcers give him the worst disposition in the state, and he will be sore. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You should have seen his face. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you guys, huh? Great gag. Morgan, you look like it's Christmas and you don't have a dime. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha. Funny, funny, huh? Some cut up, huh? The real comic kids from Funnyville. Great. I'm laughing like I'm dying. <laughs> Did you see his face? <laughs> He's as sore as a boil on a camel's back. <laughs> hey. What's the matter with you two guys? Can't you laugh at a joke? Yeah, I'm going out. If the shop calls, tell them I'm checking on the story. Ah, sore head. Well, maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Oh, well, I guess I'll go out and have a quick one and go home. 
Faber's gone to bed anyway. Now, hey, why? Come on, play cards, something. No, oh, no, I don't want to play cards. Great. Yeah, but you can't go home. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, okay? Sure, sure, great. You give a couple of guys a laugh and they don't want to know no more. Like laughs is easy to come by in this lousy place. See ya, Brad. Yeah, see ya, happy guy. Don't see something funny outside and bust your sides. Guy, you can't take a joke. <clears throat> go home to bed. Who wants to go home to bed? I don't want to go home to bed. <sighs> huh? Oh, hi, Pop. You should not have done that, Mr. Bradley. Give me a bad turn. I don't mind that. Thing is, you got me into trouble with Sarge Roberts. He keeps complaining about me anyhow. And me busting in on him just now got him real mad. Yeah, well, you see, Papa. When we got down there and found all the corpses just like they should be, first he said I was imagining things. Then when I said you press fellas had just been done, he figured out it was just one of your jokes. Yeah, Papa, well, there he it is. If I fell for any more jokes or made any more mistakes, He'd see to it I'd have to resign, like I should have done years ago. And I can't resign. I gotta have the money. So, Mr. Bradley, no more jokes, please. <sighs> and Bradley looked around him at the dingy little office and felt bad. Not for what he'd done to Pop, but because the night had suddenly turned sour on him. His friends had gone, and Bradley felt lonely and unwanted, and a bit stupid. Yeah, well, I guess that was the fastest that old man's moved for more than 20 years. <laughs> guess I'll ring the paper and go home. No, I don't want to go home. And that was Bradley's biggest mistake. He should have gone home. He should have gone home there and then. If he had, what happened after in the morning small hours wouldn't have happened. But it did happen because Bradley, you see, was a jokester with no taste. No taste at all. I feel like a new man. It's a lovely day today. I thought you had flu. I took a grandpa headache powder, and I'm well better. When colds and flu are about, grandpa headache powders are what you need. Grandpa headache powders work fast because they dissolve almost immediately. Grandpa makes all those dreadful flu symptoms disappear quickly. So, whenever you're in pain, get fast relief. Get grandpa headache powder. Ah, grandpa. Just soak. Just soak in biotech. Stains, grass stains, collar and cuff stains, ingrain dirt, soil and grime. Out they come and you don't stir a finger. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Soaking in Biotex removes the stains and dirt that washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. So I can't even blow smoke rings anymore. Even when I was a kid, I could blow smoke rings, good smoke rings. No, I can't even make bad smoke rings anymore. Can't make smoke rings at all. Oh, city desk, please. Extension. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, thanks. Oh, hi. City Desk. Express, Bradley. Ah, uh, all quiet here. They were gone to bed. Ah, good, okay. I'm going home. Don't look for me until tomorrow. So... tried to put out the burning match in his shoe. <laughs> then he saw Bradley laughing. And without another word, he swung. <laughs> Bradley just had time to feel a wicked snap somewhere at the base of his skull, and all the lights went out for him. Big slob, give me a hot foot. Me, Kid Wilkins. Let him find a heart, Kid. He's lying awful quiet. Ah, just the left of the mouth. Losing a couple of teeth, that's all. Next time he'll think twice when he goes around playing them kind of gags. Yeah. But his head, it's twisted kind of funny. Just suppose. Yeah. Yeah. He's dead. Dead as a nice smelt. Dead? What? It was an accident. I didn't hit him hard. Up to hard. It was an accident, see? Sure, kid, sure. Accident. Wait. I'm gonna make what the place is close. Accident? That's all it was. Get up, you slob. <sighs> this ain't good, kid. I got enough trouble with the cops without nobody dying in here. And you. You've got a couple of salt and battery charges done, and again, you're ready. Kid, this ain't just bad. This is no good at all. This slob's a reporter from the Express. A reporter? Almost as bad as the cop. to give me a hot foot, and I have to hit him, and he has to break his lousy neck. Why? Tell me why. Never mind the why. I got an idea. We've got to get him out of here. Over by the docks, we'll dump him. Make it look like he got mugged. 
Or maybe he was plastered and took a bad dump. Yeah, yeah, Mike. My ship sails 6 a.m. I just won't come back to this port. If anybody traces him here, he went out loaded when you're locked up. You don't know from nothing. That's it. Come on. First we take all this stuff. So they'll take longer identifying him. Yeah. Then we take him out, okay? Okay, Mike, okay. Anything you say. I didn't know. 
know you with your face all swelled up like that. Nobody knew you. Never. Right. Henderson looked troubled and uncertain. Then he picked up the sheet and folded it. Mr. Bradley, I told you before, no more jokes. Once tonight is enough, Mr. Bradley, once is enough. And he spread the sheet over the recumbent figure, covering it. Sarge Roberts wouldn't stand for me getting fooled again. No, Mr. Bradley, not twice the same night. And unhurriedly, he pushed the sliding slab into the compartment and closed the door marked 12. And turned the knob that held it shut. the body of Bradley wrapped in its sheet and safely behind the door of compartment 12, the old morgue night watchman, Pop Henderson, plodded back to his office and sat down to wait patiently for the end of his shift. in biotechs. Just soak. Just soak in biotechs. If you have wondered how to get your washing really stain-free, understand this. Biotechs removes the stains and dirt washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in biotechs. Stains, grass stains, tiresome collar and cup stains, ingrained dirt, soil and grime. Out they all come and you don't stir a finger. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Use it for cottons, silks, woolens, synthetics. Use it to make new again. Soaking in Biotex removes the stains and dirt that washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Beyond Midnight is presented every Friday night at half past nine by Biotex, the new soak and pre-wash powder. The program is adapted for broadcasting and produced by Michael McCabe.